Good afternoon, Facebook. It's been some time since I've uh, done a Facebook Live, uh, especially in 2022, but I was just uh, speaking with a client. And first, let me share some good news. One of my nonprofit clients just reached out to me today to share that their nonprofit corporation uh, just received a grant award to address the issue of homelessness. So I'm excited about that. They attended our grant workshop and they used the strategies that I shared with the attendees and they received funding. So that's great news. Okay, so on this uh, Money Mindset Monday, I want to share three things with you uh, that just came to mind today. Uh, number one, business should be reciprocal. Business should be reciprocal, value for value. If you are in business and you're meeting with a client, you are giving them value or hopefully you're giving them value. And if you're in business, you should be marketing your value and not your services. So if you're in business and you're meeting with a client and you're giving value as a business owner or entrepreneur, you should be receiving value. So if I'm meeting with a client and I'm giving them information on city, county, state, federal awards, that client should also be providing me with value in the form of compensation. So if you are given value, you should be receiving value. It's called the law of reciprocity, value for value. Business should be reciprocal. When businesses contact me and they ask uh, me to support their business, then I'll tell them about my business. So if I'm going to support your business, I want that to be reciprocal. You support my business. So if I'm meeting with a financial advisor and I'll share with a financial advisor, um, I want a contract for you to do my financial planning, uh, et cetera, or my investment planning, uh, then I'll share with them my opportunity. But I see I'm not really interested in that. I'll be like, well, I appreciate your time, but I need to find another uh, certified financial planner. Why? I help businesses that help businesses. Plain and simple. I believe in a law of reciprocity. I can't give you value unless you're willing to reciprocate. So I need to find another uh, financial planner who's going to reciprocate or engage the law of reciprocity. If I'm giving you value, I expect to leave receiving value. Uh, number two, only ask for a discount if you're willing to give your employer a discount. So if we're sitting across from each other, before you ask me for a discount on my services, I'm going to ask you, will you give your employer a discount on your services when it comes to your paycheck? Let me repeat that. If you're sitting across from me and you want me to give you a discount on my services, I'm going to ask you, do you give your employer a discount on your nine to five when it comes to your paycheck? If you're not willing to give your employer a discount on your wages or your paycheck, why would you expect that from me as a self-employed person? Because you as a wage earner or a W-2 employee, half of your taxation is paid for by your employer. Your employer more than likely contributes to your 401k and to your medical benefits. As an entrepreneur or business person, we pay 100% of all of those costs. So when you pay us, that's not going strictly to our paycheck. That's called business income. And with that business income, we have to use that to take care of our taxes on both sides of the table, the corporate taxes and the employment taxes and plan for our retirement. And if there's gonna be an employer contribution, guess what, that comes out of the business income that we collect from our clients. So if you're gonna ask a business owner for a discount, first ask yourself, would you be willing to give your employer a discount on your paycheck or your wages? And last but not least, prices are not subject to time. Prices and time are two different things. People think that if I sit down with you, I'm paying $50 for an hour of your time, $75 for an hour of your time, $100 for an hour of your time. No, you're paying for value. And case in point, I'll give you an example. If you understood that Osceola was this great consultant 
and anybody that sits down with Osceola, Osceola uh, can give them strategies where within a year they can be a millionaire. But I told you to sit down with me, it was $1,000 for the hour. But I have documented outcomes. People that sit down with me, I have a 98% success rate. Everybody that sits down with me, within the first year, I make them millionaires. Would you be willing to pay the $1,000 for the hour? Most people will rationalize that and say, yes, that's a logical conclusion. I would pay the $1,000 for the hour. Why? Because you're not paying for time. You're paying for value associated with the person you're sitting across from. So with all businesses and practitioners, if you believe that they're going to provide you with value to change your station of living, then you should be willing to pay their fee. If you don't associate that value with them, then don't give them your time or compensation. But remember, you're not paying for time. You're paying for value. That's why if you are an entrepreneur or you are a practitioner, you should never sell your services. Sell your value. What value are you going to provide? That's why people choose Chick-fil-A over McDonald's and Burger King. Because they're paying for the value. They're paying for the, serve, the customer service. They're paying for the value of the food. They're paying for the dining experience. Always market your value. Those are the three things that I have. I just want to share that with you, family. Uh, this is Osceola Thomas, a nonprofit consultant and proposal writer. Uh, to date, within the last one on now six years, we've been able to bring in a little over $60 million to nonprofits. This year, we're focusing solely on churches, the faith based community. I really want to see the faith based community come outside of their four walls and create communal change at the grassroots level for disenfranchised and marginalized communities. Uh, we're in our brick buildings on Sunday morning, our brick temples, uh, while the big bad wolf is huffing and puffing and blowing the community down. I'm challenging the faith based community to come out of their brick temples and confront the wolf. There's governmental funding. Uh, right now, the biggest initiatives, of course, is uh, Every Student Succeeds Act. There's dollars associated with that uh, to provide structured after school programming, academic remediation, vocational programming, uh, homelessness issue. There's the emergency solutions grant that deals with rapid rehousing and eradicating poverty. You also have the Juvenile Justice Initiative, which is now the RED Initiative, reducing racial and ethnic disparities, diverting youth from the juvenile justice system. There's dollars tied to that. As a matter of fact, uh, Biden administration has the second highest allocation in juvenile justice history, second only to the 2010 allocation under President Obama. So we're at an unprecedented time when it comes to nonprofits and specific, specifically the church. This is the time for the church uh, to come forth, to take the helm, drive the ship that leads to community change. All right, family, I love you all. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that was said, please inbox me. I'm here to help, and I wish you and your organization much success.